bitch, and welcome back to me talking about people I motherfucking hate, bitch. What's up? <laughs> Today we're talking about the sport that all English writers dream of doing, and all little girls, little horse girls, put up pictures on their walls and dream of getting that ribbon. Ah! We're talking about hunter jumper and i'm sorry but i'm getting ready to crush a few dreams in this video because it's not as graceful and beautiful and fun and amazing as what a lot of people think it is there definitely are some abusive aspects of hunter jumper and that's what we're going to dive into today so buckle up because today we're going to be talking about my six reasons to hate hunter jumper and things that need to change i'm adding that in there because i don't entirely think that hunter jumper is bad i actually think that there are some good aspects to it and i uh definitely think there are ways to be an ethical hunter jumper rider i think the biggest problem that so many equestrian sports have is their lack of awareness and ability to take responsibility and make changes within their sport a lot of sports wait until shit gets really, really bad to make changes and be responsible for the negative things happening within their sport instead of actively trying to prevent them along the way so it doesn't snowball into something way bigger. So I'm not trying to be a Karen in this video, but I'm getting ready to crush those dreams, you little horse girls, let's go. First and foremost, we've got to start off with the wear and tear on horse biomechanics. A lot of people and a lot of riders are completely unaware of the biomechanics of their horse and how their horse's musculoskeletal system works. I mean, shit, a lot of people don't even know about the horse's nervous system. They don't even understand that horses have a vast amount of more nerve endings than people do. There's always going to be people within every industry that just don't know that much and are very unknowledgeable about the sport that they're actually in. However, I think it's important just right out of the gate to firstly address the negative effects of jumping on horses. Dr. Elizabeth Davidson explains, any horse can get hurt at any time, of course, but hunter jumper and hunt seat equitation competitions make demands that set horses up for certain injuries. Jumping stresses tendons and ligaments that support the leg during both push off and landing. The impact of landing can also cause damage to structures in the front feet. The bigger the jump, the bigger the stress. Speed increases the stress of jumping, so risks are higher for jumpers who are against the clock. Tight turns raise the odds of a misstep that could lead to injury. Repetitive stress takes a toll. Many horses in these sports show year-round, and when they're not showing, they're schooling. With repetitive stress, minor damage can build up in the ligaments and other structures. Dr. Davidson continues, then something tips it over the edge. The most common seen injuries in jumping horses are suspensory ligament tears, sore feet, joint problems, and issues relating to keeping horses sound. So what happens? The horse's feet are designed to handle great forces, but jumping fence after fence takes a toll, and common problems include strains and tears, inflammation of the coffin bone, deep bone bruising, and inflammation or degeneration of the navicular bone, sometimes both. Elite horses are especially prone to joint problems. Dr. Davidson continues, jumping a lot of big jumps and jumping every weekend stresses joints and eventually triggers degenerative joint disease. So in the words of the wise, I wanna end on a great quote by Dr. Davidson. Don't overtrain or overface him. Keep his work within his ability and be sure he's in shape for what he's asked to do fitness, respiratory, cardiovascular, muscle, tendon, ligaments, and bone fitness, 
helps avoid injuries. I think being in tune with your horse's biomechanics and doing regular physicals with your horses is so unbelievably important because jumping does include extreme risks of injuries for horses, no matter what level you're doing. Some horses are just not capable of jumping, and that's the biggest problem I see within the jumping community is a lot of people buy horses that are not hunter-jumper horses and force these horses to jump, and then the horses develop serious problems. And this moves me in to reason number two, bitch. The jumps are ridiculously high or dangerous. Now this is obviously not the case for every single hunter jumper competition I've seen, but I'm talking about those competitions and we all know them. I've even seen a few cross country courses that were like this where the entire course was literally set up to be the most dangerous thing ever. So all of the dangerous jumping courses aside, because those are ridiculous, and I've seen a lot of really dangerous jumping courses at higher levels that should just point blank period not be allowed at all. I think something that needs to be noted is the height of some of these jumps is unbelievably stupid. If you're jumping anything over like four feet, I just think that's really unnatural for a horse and it's just going to cause additional stress and problems for the animal. The higher you jump a horse, the more problems and the more stress you're putting on their legs. You are going to cause that horse serious problems by consistently jumping them any higher than like four feet. I just think that's insane. I mean, it's almost like they're asking for vet bills. It's just insane. And, and what kind of enjoyment do you get out of jumping a horse? horse that high? Is there really that much of a difference? At that point, I think that you're just doing it for competitive purposes and not because you actually care about the well-being of your animal. I'm sorry, I know I'm going to get a lot of people and some of even my personal friends saying that that's ridiculous for me to say, but that's just how I personally feel and I don't feel like you're putting the safety and health of your animal first if you're taking them out and jumping them five, six feet. That's insane. Now we're moving into number three, which is jumping horses way too much and you know who you are. I don't even have to point any of you bitches out. People who put way too much stress on their horses and expect them day after day after day to go out and do jumping, even if it's just tiny. I don't even care if it's six inches off the ground. If you're taking your horse out every single day, and jumping them. It's not even good to ride horses every day. I mean, that puts immense stress on your horse's biomechanics. Horses are not meant to be jumping every single day. And when you make that the only thing the horse does, imagine how crazy they go when the only thing these horses do is jump constantly. You know, I got a lot of barrel racers saying that I needed to call out jumping because I talked about how in my barrel racing video, all that barrel racers do is take their horses out and run them around in circles and that's why their horses go crazy. Well, guess what? The same logic applies to jumping. I've seen plenty of hunter jumper horses where all that they do when they take their horses out is jump them constantly and that's all that these horses are used for. Sometimes these horses don't even get turnout time. I literally have been to so many barns where the horses sit in stalls all day and they only take the horses out to do jumping lessons. That's it. That's their life. That's not a quality life for these animals. And if all you're doing with the horse is jumping them, they're going to go crazy. Is the horse's life really worth that little to you that you can't supply them with an adequate, comfortable living environment of being able to be a horse mentally and physically, being able to be out with other horses and running around, playing, 
That's what horses deserve. That's what horses need. They're not here for you to just stick them in a little jail cell all day and take them out when you want to jump them over ridiculously stupid high fences. So stop jumping your horses all day every day. Let them be a horse. Moving on, we got to talk about flat work. One of the most important things and fundamentals of training and working with horses is making sure that your horse has adequate flat work, muscle development, movement, balance, etc. And I know a lot of hunter jumpers are also very critical of other hunter jumpers who do this. Plenty of them have horses that have not done adequate flat work or muscle development and they take their horses out and expect way too much from them. A lot of horses, especially at lower levels, are just not capable of doing some of the events and shows that people are asking of them and mostly because people buy, you know, the cheap horse and then they put their kid in a few lessons and take them to a few shows and that horse nine times out of ten is not going to be capable or trained well enough to be able to adequately do the things that you're asking them to do. I've seen tons of hunter jumper horses that are very underweight, very under muscle, and they don't have a lot of balance and they don't have a lot of movement and flexion and it just looks like shit when they take them out and they just run them over jumps. There's a lot more to jumping than just forcing your horse over a jump. A lot of hunter jumpers expect way too much from their horses. Most horses are just normal horses. They're not bred for jumping five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twenty 10, 20 feet, okay? You can't expect every single horse to be a super horse and go out and be able to go over all of these jumps for you absolutely perfectly with no problems. I mean, when was the last time, and seriously, I want you to ask yourself this, if you're a hunter jumper, when was the last time that you actually put in a decent amount of time into your horse's flat work? And now some of you are really responsible about it, and that's why I'm not hating on the entire sport. But you guys know that there are a lot of people within your sport that don't do this. And this is a huge fundamental problem within Hunter Jumper. That's why a lot of kids fall off, especially in jumping. But I think this one really feeds into my reason number five, which is, holy shit. Hunter jumper competitions are so unbelievably competitive. I mean, honestly, right next to barrel racing, I don't think I've ever seen women as vicious, except maybe other barrel racers, as hunter jumpers are in competition. I've seen a lot of really vicious women in hunter jumper competitions, even men. A lot of these people just do this for a ribbon. That's why these horses, nine times out of 10, have a lack of training, muscle development, they've got injuries, sometimes even chronic injuries. And a lot of these riders don't really care because all that they want these horses for is to go out and do the jumps that they want and win a ribbon. And then they toss them aside and buy the next horse to do it for them until they ruin that one. You know, we gotta end on bad riders, baby. Number six, holy shit, we gotta talk about the, the amount of riders in Hunter Jumper with a lack of equitation. And not just a lack of equitation, but also education and bad tack. I think that needs to be added in. I have seen a lot of Hunter Jumpers that have ill-fitted tack, and I have seen a lot of Hunter Jumpers that tighten their tack way too much, even to the point where you're causing circulatory problems for your horses, which is a thing if you tighten your girth too much. People need to know that. But with all of the bad tack aside, I've seen a lot of hunter jumpers that have really bad equitation. I mean, guys, we remember this guy, okay? I made a video about him. Go watch. I see a lot of little kids that just hop on horses and all they want to do is jump, but they're not trained properly. You know who I'm talking about? Hint, hint, wink, wink. You can do it. I'm imagining it. It's going to be beautiful. That stuff like tons of kids ride horses just to jump them and they don't actually go through the proper training measures to be able to do that properly and adequately and safely just a PSA 
If you're pulling on your horse's reins for balance, you shouldn't be jumping. If you are slamming onto the horse's back after a jump, you should not be jumping. If you are going into two point way before your horse is even jumping, you should not be jumping. If you are leaning so far forward that if your horse stopped before a jump, you would fall right off and over, you should not be jumping. If you're bouncing all around and you can't sit a canter on a horse, you should not be jumping. I just feel like there's a lot of kids that jump the gun and they just wanna jump horses without any training at all, no foundation. And kids are just really impatient. That's why I'm saying that this is mostly kids for number six, because I've seen this mostly in children. So yes, jumping can be ethical and it can be humane. There's plenty of hunter jumper competitions that allow you to ride in uh, bitless bridles, hackamores, they allow you to use scoop boots now. I think I think that it is possible to jump horses at a reasonable height, be a good rider with good equitation and good tack, and make sure that you keep up with your horse's fitness and uh, obviously vet visits, making sure there's no problems that develop in your horse. Really, it's all about caring about your horse's well-being and your own well-being and safety because most of these problems also have to do with people not valuing their own safety and putting time and care into making sure that they don't get hurt themselves and they don't injure their animals. Life with horses is more than a ribbon. If all you care about is winning a ribbon, then you shouldn't be riding horses. The idea of winning ribbons and competition has really taken away from people's relationships with their horses.